Hi everyone, my name is Jibo with Clash Tournaments and I'm here to bring you a competitive analysis on Sony's brand new PlayStation All-Stars. There has been a lot of excitement for the game ever since it was first leaked under the name Title Fight, but it seems like things have changed. The first glimpse we had gotten to see of the game were some development shots of a Sweet Tooth model, a debug mode of sorts, and a model of a female fighter evil suspected Nariko from Heavenly Sword. Fast forward a few months to this past week, the game was officially revealed as PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale, and what was exactly what people expected, essentially a Super Smash Bros. clone with Sony characters. But just how similar is the title to Super Smash Bros.? Will the game fit into the fighting game community? And most importantly, how will it play? I have been very excited for this title since it first leaked out, and when I first saw footage of it featured on Spike TV, I was confused. The game at first glance did appear to be similar to Smash, but some key elements were different. On the surface, the largest change is the special move system, which is more similar to that of a traditional fighting game, where characters build a super meter and unleash a level 1, 2, or 3 super attack. Before getting into how the game plays right away, let's back up and look at the obvious. Sony's PlayStation All-Stars is a fighting game featuring characters and worlds from many different Sony first-party titles. It doesn't end here, however, as it was revealed that PAS will feature some third-party characters, that your guess on who will make it is as good as mine. I'm sure many players wouldn't mind getting to play as Solid Snake, Crash Bandicoot, or Lara Croft in the game, all three characters that start on the original Sony PlayStation. Currently, six characters have been unveiled along with four different stages. The revealed characters certainly showcase a wide assortment of style and history, giving us realistic and cel-shaded characters from the early PS1 days to recent PSN titles. As first depicted in one of the leaked screenshots, Sweet Tooth is indeed in the game. Along with Sweet Tooth, the game will have Colonel Raddock from Killzone, Sly Cooper from, well, Sly Cooper, Kratos from God of War, Parappa from Parappa the Rapper, and Fat Princess from, you guessed it, Fat Princess. These six characters have already shown very different battle styles, from Colonel Raddock's long-range weaponry to Parappa's close-range kung fu. One of my favorite parts of the game shown so far is the levels. Unlike the Super Smash Bros. series that featured a single theme for each stage, PlayStation All-Stars mixes together two different games for each stage. Of the four stages shown so far we have Metropolis, a level mixed between Ratchet and & Clank and God of War, Sandover Village, a level mixed between Jack and & Daxter and Hot Shots Golf, my personal favorite, Hades, a level mixed between God of War and Patapon, and Dreamscape, a stage mixed between Little Big Planet and Buzz. These stages aren't quite as static as those looking for a competitive fighter may hope, as it seems that the levels will have quite an impact on the players. Dreamscape features a trivia minigame during the battle when Buzz is present in the backdrop. You must answer a question by standing on the platform with the corresponding answer, and anyone who is incorrect is punished. So we have characters and stages, but how do we play? The game's controls seem to be an awkward combination of the Super Smash Bros., Marvel vs. Capcom 3, and various action games. IGN has created an easy-to-read image displaying all the controls in the game. You move with the D-pad or left analog stick, and have access to jumping, attacking, shielding, items, and special moves. Similar to Marvel vs. Capcom 3, your main attacks are mapped to the square, triangle, and circle buttons. Similar to Smash, attacks are performed by using one of these three main attack buttons, or you can press them while holding a direction to perform a different attack, similar to tilt and smash attacks in Super Smash Bros. What seems awkward is the ability to grab in PlayStation All-Stars by using the right analog stick in conjunction with the left analog stick. Blocking is mapped to the L1 button, picking up items to R1, and special attacks are on R2. It is currently unknown if you'll be able to customize controls and if there is a use for the L2 button. In most traditional fighting games, the goal is simple. Kill your opponent by dishing out attacks and reducing their HP to zero. In Super Smash Bros., you instead land attacks on your opponent to raise their percent, which gives them higher knockback until you kill them by a ring out. PlayStation All-Stars doesn't use either of these methods exactly. In traditional game mode we have seen so far, there are no health bars and no lives, so how do you win? The goal in this game appears to be to land the most KOs in the allotted time limit, essentially like Super Smash Bros. time mode. But instead of killing characters via depleting their HP or scoring a ring out, you kill them with your super attacks. 
In order to perform super attacks, you need to build your super meter. You do this by landing basic attacks and combos on your enemies. The more attacks you land, the more super meter you gain, which means the more super attacks you can unleash to kill your opponents. There is one other method of building your super meter, which is by collecting small orbs on a screen called AP. AP orbs pop out of the, your opponents when you land certain stronger attacks, similar to the coin mode of Super Smash Bros. As AP orbs pop out of you, you will lose a little bit of super meter. You can, however, recollect your own AP orbs if your opponent doesn't get to them first. There are other special methods of collecting AP, such as Parappa's boombox attack, where he puts down a boombox that spews out AP orbs for free. All things considered, what we have seen so far with PlayStation All-Stars makes it very similar to Super Smash Bros. Time Mode. The developer Superbot has said, however, that they are working on a stock mode for the game, which is the traditional competitive mode of Super Smash Bros. What worries me about the method of only landing kills with your super attacks is the potential balance of the game. There can only be so many different methods of super moves possible for each character. Already in the six characters unveiled, two of the characters basically have the same level 3 super, as both Sly Cooper and Colonel Raddick go into a first person view with a reticle to blast their opponents to death, which is unusually similar to Solid Tank's final smash from Brawl. People who got hands on with the new game at Sony's special event last week believe that Parappa is one of the strongest characters shown so far, as his level 3 super is an instant kill to everyone on the screen, and his level 2 is a quick and mobile skateboard attack that kills any opponent it touches. Overall, Sony PlayStation's All-Stars controls much closer to the Super Smash Bros. series instead of other classic fighters like Marvel vs. Capcom. Attacks are dished out with one of three main attack buttons. You can modify which attack you do by pressing the attack button in conjunction with the direction, like performing a various tilt and aerial attacks in Smash. Using directional combinations such as quarter circle and dragon punch motions do not perform different attacks in the game. You are able to move your character with both the D-pad and left analog stick. While I cannot confirm this without playing the title, this seems to suggest that there is only one speed players are able to move, similar to most fighting games, however unlike Smash where movement with the analog stick allows you to either walk or run at your preference. Like most other fighting games, characters are also able to jump in conjunction with running, and it has been seen that at least some characters are able to double jump. Items in PlayStation All-Stars might only be picked up while stationary on the ground with the R1 button. This is quite different from item use in Brawl, where characters are able to grab items out of nearly any attack or dodge. You are able to drop items in PAS after using them by pressing the R1 button once more, though it only drops the items simply instead of throwing them as a potential weapon like in Super Smash Bros. The L1 button for shooting serves multiple purposes, just as it does in Smash. When holding down the L1 button on the ground, your character blocks, though I am currently unsure how this block system works. I can't confirm if there is a high-low forward blocking mechanic like most traditional fighters, or an all-around shield with steel zapping like Smash, or perhaps just an all-purpose forward-facing shield unique to this game. While shielding, you may press the left or right direction to roll with temporary invulnerability, just like Smash. The similarities in defense don't end there, as you may press L1 in the air to do an air dodge, which gives you temporary in vulnerability without changing your direction, making it very similar to the air dodge found in Brawl, but unlike Melee. The only exception to the blocking system so far seems to be the character Sly Cooper, who is simply unable to block at all. When you press L1 on the ground as Sly Cooper, he instead turns invisible. Unfortunately, Sly Cooper is still vulnerable in this invisible mode, giving him no truly reliable means to block damage on the ground, but it gives him access to extra attacks coming out of stealth, strong enough to knock AP orbs out of his opponents. Super Smash Bros. is for the Wii, which surely leaves a lot to be wished for in the graphics department. With Sony PAS being a PS3 exclusive, I'm sure everyone is expecting the game to blow us away with the visuals. Long story short, the game is beautiful. Interestingly enough, it seems that most characters are near ports out of their original games without any kind of visual restyling to fit them into the Sony All-Stars universe. Characters like Kratos and Fat Princess, despite coming from drastically different sources, look just like they do from their original titles. This is different from past crossover games that instead alter their characters to match a similar visual style, such as Phoenix Wright being redesigned in 3D for Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, or Sheik being redesigned in the Twilight Princess style for Super Smash Bros. Brawl, despite not actually appearing in the game since Ocarina of Time on the N64. While this is neither a positive nor a negative, it is an interesting design choice which certainly works. The stages in the game are absolutely stunning. 
it seems that there is just as much style and power going into the rendering of the stages as there are for the characters. They are by far the most visually stunning stages seen out of any fighting game, which is certainly a major plus for spectators, especially those less accustomed to the competitive ins and outs of titles and are more looking for a movie-like spectacle. The mixture of visual styles from different games for the stages works great, as we see massive detailed monster models mixed with simple 2D sprites like in the Hades level. Another noteworthy level design combination is how the world of Buzz brings a bright splash of blue with fireworks that adds flair to the world of Little Big Planet. As great as the stages and characters look, I feel however like there is so much emphasis on making them look as true to their home for style that the developer Superbot skipped out on optimizing them for a fighting title. There are times when the background gets so dark that the characters can easily get lost in the action. Take this screenshot for instance, if the characters here hadn't been outlined in blue, which happens when your character has a meter of super ready, it would be incredibly tough to keep track of the players on the screen. Compare this to other fighting games where simple training levels may be available, which give an incredibly clear view of every character and the actions they are performing. Even though the blue outline just discussed happens to be an eye saver for your tracking your player, I can't help but feel it looks quite tacky when going for the very real and original look of all the graphics, or where a more complex visual effect could instead be used to denote a meter of super being obtained. So does PlayStation All-Stars have what it takes to keep toe-to-toe -to -toe with other competitive fighting game titles? I can't help but feel the game so far is catering too much to casual communities, despite Superbot ensuring us that they are working on making it competitive, down to reminding us that staff from Superbot, making PAS, has worked on past competitive titles such as the new Mortal Kombat. With what we have been shown, however, I'm not personally convinced. It's easy to make comparisons from PAS to Smash Bros. due to the large number of similarities between the titles. While some may not agree that Brawl is a competitive fighter, the Smash community has done our best to do what we can to make the game the best it can be and fit for tournaments. Considering this, however, nearly everything Sony's PlayStation All-Stars has shown so far is essentially banned from Super Smash Bros. line of games and competitive play. The game's main mode is essentially a copy of Brawl's time match. While this isn't enough to take the game down, not to mention Superbot mentioned that they are working on other game modes such as the stock function, I can't imagine normal tournaments relying on only on a time mode. The gameplay found in time mode makes each match a set amount of time with no varying length. This could make many one-sided matches seemingly drag on, while other tense matches may feel cut short. As the goal is to have the most KOs at the end of the match, there unfortunately isn't a way yet to see how many KOs each player has earned throughout the match, which serves as a double-edged sword. On the poor end, it is complicated to spectators to track the pace of the match and see who is ahead. The good side, cited by Superbot, is that it prevents players from ganging up on whoever is currently in the lead. However, in a competitive scene, I doubt we will often see four-player free-for-all versus modes happening much, which makes this a moot point for competitive play. The way supers are earned in Sony's PAS is perfectly fine. It is a skill rewarding factor much more like traditional fighters instead of the Smash Ball item granting final smashes in Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Sony's PAS rewards good gameplay with supers, which is good for a competitive game. I'm glad to see a proper implementation of a super system in a 2D platforming fighter like this. What troubles me most about the game are outside elements harming the players. This is a common thing seen throughout levels in Super Smash Bros. with things like bombs flying in the pirate ship level. Despite problematic stages in Smash, many of them are still deemed fine for competitive play such as Battlefield and Final Destination, and rule sets now commonly leave on over 10 legal stages to play on. Sony's PAS on the other hand, every single one of the four stages features outside interactions with the battle. Metropolis has a conveyor belt which moves characters into chopping blades, Sandover Village has golf balls raining down on characters, Hades has arrows raining down on players in clumps, those first marked on the ground where they will fall, and Dreamscape features minigame trivia sections inspired by Buzz, punishing players who answer questions wrong. The Dreamscape level bears striking resemblance to the WarioWare stage from Brawl, which is likely seen as one of the worst or most bannable stages. We know more stages will be shown eventually for Sony's PAS, so we can only hope that there will be more standard stages featured. Though even if most stages disrupt the gameplay like the ones shown now, is it necessarily a bad thing considering how the game pans out? The worst that can happen when getting hit by stage elements is losing some super meter and having AP orbs fly out that can be collected by your opponent. This is a stark difference compared to Smash where a single stage element can cause death, completely changing the tides of battle. 
Sony unveiled PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale last week at a special event showing the game off to multiple media outlets. As information and gameplay footage makes its way around the internet, interest for the game is rising. Players won't have to wait long to get their hands on the game, as Superbot says the game will be out in time for the holiday season this year, and with E3 right around the corner, I'm sure we will learn more information about the title. Comparisons to Super Smash Bros. have been thrown left and right, but it's entirely appropriate to do so. The game clearly draws the majority of its inspiration from the title. Superbot has done a good job in mixing up the pace of gameplay, changing it essentially to an arms race to see who can build their super meter faster. This would be good for an active gameplay and decrease the possibility of campy gameplay that plagues Super Smash Bros. and some playstyles of Marvel vs. Capcom. I do believe, however, that Sony and Superbot are almost too afraid to copy Smash too closely, keeping away from any potential negative comments claiming they just copied the game. Despite this, perhaps borrowing some additional elements from Smash and the standard FGC titles would make the game better and more fit for competitive play. Taking inspiration in other games is not necessarily a bad thing. Sony appears to be serious about wanting this game to be adapted by various competitive communities, but I don't think showing the game off in a time mode only fashion is the right way to do it, as this mode likely isn't as fit for competitive plays as other ways this game could be played. Every stage shown so far does interact with the player in a potential negative fashion, and some characters are already displaying very similar super attacks with only six characters revealed. The game definitely has promise, but a lot will need to change between now and the release date. I for one would like to see different, perhaps more basic stages, some sort of life system, team combat, and any sort of advanced techniques or more information on the combo system in the title. The game will definitely take off with quickly with casual communities, and it looks to be a load of fun, but at the moment, I don't think this is a game that will see any sort of shoo-in for tournaments like EVO. I asked various competitive game players if they had any questions or comments about Sony PlayStation All-Stars. Juice.Ether asks, How does the resource system work? In Sony PlayStation All-Stars, the main resource you have to manage is your super meter. You gain super by performing attacks and combos using your standard moves and collecting AP orbs. You gain AP orbs by knocking them out of your opponent, which will cause them to lose super meter, and various attacks may provide orbs like Parappa's boombox attack. Once you fill up your super meter, you gain a blue outline and can perform a super attack. You get one bar to unleash a basic super, two bars for a medium super, and three bars for your strongest attack. If you have three bars of super, you can only perform a level three super. There is no way to perform less powerful supers to conserve bars like in Marvel vs. Capcom. You must perform the special of how many bars you have. Summer asks, what modes would the game have besides the standard multiplayer mode and classic story mode? Superbot mentioned at their event a few days ago that they are working on other modes in addition to the 4-player free-for-all and story mode, including a stock mode. The Truth asks, Will the game be more combo-based in a way similar to traditional fighters, or read-based like Smash and Brawl in particular? Based on gameplay videos so far, there are definitely combos. However, it seems that in general, knockback is pretty strong in the game. Remember that this game has static knockback similar to classic fighters since there is no percent system like Smash. However, to accommodate such large stages, the knockback is set quite large, which may make combos shorter overall. Bonk had asked a few very good questions. Stage size, what's keeping players from running away, such as circle camping? Frankly, not much. However, seeing current stage design, the only real stage that seems to offer circle camping is Sandover Village. What mostly stops circle camping is the nature of the game. To win, you need super meter to kill your opponents, and to get super meter, you need to fight your opponents. One of the best competitive aspects of this game is that the very nature of it is anti-camping. How do stage interferences play a role in a match? Many stages seem to have damaging elements about them, well in fact, they all do. But remember, there is no damage in this game. Instead, the hazards cause you to drop AP orbs. This means that you lose some super meter, and your opponents have the ability to grab those orbs to gain some super meter. Bonk's next question is, Killing with supers only, won't a tier list be already based on the effectiveness of a super as well as gaining the meter? This is something I'm afraid of. I believe many supers will be too similar, especially considering two of the six revealed characters have nearly identical level threes. Basically, each character's worth in battle is reliant on three moves and three supers. When you reduce characters down to such small meeting, it may offer a balanced game, but it may end up being quite stale quickly. 
and Bonk's final question, walls are going to play a major role. What mechanics in the game keep characters from using wall infinites? Many stages have walls. In fact, three of the four stages are closed in like a box. Wall battles are going to happen a lot in this game. However, with how strong knockback seems to be from attacks, I doubt it will open up many opportunities for wall infinites. As far as we've seen, the game does not offer any sort of infinite prevention system similar to Skullgirls. That about wraps it up for this video. I want to thank everybody for watching and I encourage all of you to keep track of information related to Sony's PlayStation All-Stars. I don't know if the game will prove to be very competitive worthy with what we've seen so far, but the game still has a lot going for it. We can expect more information to come about PAS from E3 this summer. Be sure to follow me here on YouTube and check out my website ClassTournaments.com for more content from me.